Let's look at API, and in particular, GET and POST requests. It's a kind of gateway to data. A GET request is used to read data, while a POST request is used to write data. Now let's switch to the API tab. Let's create a new endpoint for the books structure. Add the endpoint method, get books, and a description. Now it's time to add a new layer. By default, the endpoint is not public. Let's change that and give everyone access to the endpoint. Next, add some fields to read. Select all fields except the system kinds. Now click Save and go to Preview. We see the endpoint address and a preview of response. In this case, the author is shown only by ID. We can change that and add more fields, including date of birth, last name, and even an array of links, that is, book IDs. Let's look at the preview again. Now we have a complex response with nested data. We can copy the endpoint address from the preview. Note that one of the parameters, app ID, is an application key. You can find all the application keys in the API Keys tab. A product like Postman makes API testing very convenient. It's free and easy to download and install. You can use it to make requests and test your API. Let's send a GET request. Copy the endpoint address and send a request. We see an array of objects, which are books, with all the fields that can be read in the response. That's our GET request. Let's see how to save data, create new objects, and edit them with a POST request. Let's create a new access point, even though you can see the previous one. This access point is also tied to the books structure. Add the endpoint method, set books, and a description. Also, remove the default conditions for the ID to make the endpoint public. We need to add at least one field for reading. For now, let's just use the ID. Now add fields for writing. Let's add two fields, the book title and the year it was published. Now save the endpoint, then copy the endpoint address from the preview. Add a new request in Postman. The request type is POST. Copy the endpoint address and fill in the requested body, which is in JSON format. We must specify the value of the object fields we want to send in the body of the request. The book's title is Crime and Punishment. And the year it was published, 1866. If we send it, we see that the API returned the object's ID. This is the field we added for reading. If we try to write any other field that we didn't specify, the API will return an error. Let's have a look at the data structure. Go to the Library folder, then to the Books structure. Here you can see a new object with all the fields we've specified. If we want to edit this object, we need to know its ID and explicitly specify that ID in the request. Now let's change the book title by adding an exclamation mark. At the same time, we mustn't forget to change the endpoint to include the ID in the fields for writing. Additionally, you can expand the list of fields that can be read with the title and the year. Has it worked? Success! Let's look again at the data structure. Go to the Database tab, then the Books structure. 
we can see that the object has changed. We can see an expanded view of the object with all its versions. We see who introduced changes and when it was done. If necessary, we can roll back to an earlier version, and we'll do that now. As we said before, the same endpoint can be used for both GET and POST requests. Let's make a GET request for our SET BOOKS endpoint. The body isn't necessary for a GET request. We'll get all our books, including the one we just added. One POST request can be used to save multiple objects or, for example, to edit one object and add another. The body of the request should be changed to an array of objects. Now add one more object, a book called Cossacks by Leo Tolstoy, and specify the author's ID by copying it from the author's structure. Now add the field for the author of the book we already have, because we're going to edit it. Copy the Fyodor Dostoevsky ID. Be sure to add this field in the endpoint to the fields for writing. Save and test. Now make a request and we see from the response that the request was successful. Look in the database. We see the old book, Crime and Punishment, and it's changed. Now the author is specified and we see a new book, Cossacks by Leo Tolstoy. And a little point to pay attention to. If we're using the Directual API with external systems, it is obligatory to specify the content type in the request header. If we leave that parameter out, the API will return an error. If we add the respective content type, application, JSON, the API works correctly.